G'day guys and welcome to Ask a Pathfinder's how-to video series where we will be teaching you how to play Pathfinder 1st Edition. First of all, we're going to be taking a look at character sheets and what you need to know to build and construct your very first character. Let's get into it! Alright gang, so first of all we need to know how to read this character sheet because it is effectively you in this campaign. It covers all your abilities, your skills, your attributes and exactly what you have to interact with your RPG. So, we're going to be reading the character sheets from top to bottom, left to right and uh, just very briefly touching on some tips and tricks for uh, basically filling out these sheets. Now if you have already uh, you know, played RPGs or played Pathfinder before and you are familiar with sheets like this you know, don't, you know, don't fret, we are going to be throwing in a few of my own personal tricks for, you know, keeping house with my character sheets. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Mr. Editor, will you pull up a character sheet for me? Okay, now this is ridiculous. Why am I so small? Is, is that, do I have to be small? Yeah? Okay. You sure? Yeah, alright. Okay, let's talk about character sheets. So, uh, first and foremost, starting from the top right hand side right there, uh, is the character, well what I like to call the character bio. This is the information of what's on your sheet and what's, on, what's to come, as well as a nice juicy bit of uh, inspiration to kind of remind you who you're playing. So, character name. What is in a name? Tis but a rose. No. Uh, <laughs> a character name is very important and something that you shouldn't throw away. Don't be, uh, you know, don't be afraid to express yourself, but at the same time, don't turn your name into a joke. You know, uh, there's only so many times you can play a character called Kitty McKidface, son of Kitty Kidson, and he, uh, he has a slave trade. Uh, you know, like, it's it maybe funny when you make the character, but when people start calling you McKidface, uh, you know, maybe that'll grade on you, maybe it won't, who knows, but, you know, character name, very important, always remember to, uh, to choose something that's going to suit your game and you. Alignment, now okay, put down your torches and pitchforks, I'm not going to be arguing about alignment, but here is essentially what it is. There are nine alignments to choose for, ranging from lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, neutral good, true neutral, neutral evil, chaotic good, sorry, chaotic evil, neutral evil and lawful evil now the chaotic and lawful spectrum is about whether or not you follow a code and are true to your word the good and evil uh scale is basically the morals of your gm and how this world functions with those morals the neutral is kind of like uh, almost like a motivation um nuller so if you are lawful neutral you don't really you are following the law but it, it doesn't matter if the law is good or evil that's kind of what neutral fits into so, alignment is not a definition of how your character needs to be, but it is a representation of your character's alignment within the world for the purposes of game mechanics only. What does that even mean? Well, let's say that your character is like Batman. Batman follows his own code. He is lawful. But he can be kind of, well, a bit heavy-handed when using it. So, lawful neutral, right? He is a lawful neutral character. It does not mean that Batman makes decisions and goes, God damn it, I know that I'm a lawful neutral character, therefore I cannot kill the Joker. No, he just doesn't kill the Joker because that's in his nature, you know. That's, that's how this kind of works. So alignment, very important, always keep track of it. Well, actually your GM will tell you if it changes, but, you know, keep track of it. Next up, who you are as a player, very important because, you know, in case you forget who you are. Character level. Now, classes go in here along with whatever level your character is. So, if you are taking levels of Barbarian, Ranger, Bard, all of these things that would otherwise define your, uh, your abilities, your skills, and all of that sort of stuff, this is where you track exactly how much you've come in any particular class. Uh, you can multi-class, if uh, your GM allows, uh, and take multiple classes, and so this is where you keep track of all that. Next up is your deity. Your deity is your god that you worship. Now, bear in mind that you do not need to just be a divine class gaining powers from your deity in order to be, uh, worship a deity. You could be a fighter who worships the god of strength because, yes, every time I go out to war, I, I want to make sure that I'm covered, you know, spiritually. Uh, and deity, very important. Always a good idea. 
Homeland, where do you come from? Now, if you, like me, play on the Pathfinder world of Galarian, your homeland can really help define you as an individual. Cultures can really help inspire exactly how your character plays, behaves, what they consider to be the lawful norm, and what they consider to be uh, completely wackadoodle. Uh, but uh, whatever it is, your homeland, very important to kind of give a good thought to. Your race, that is, of course, your genetics, who, who and what you are. Uh, these can be obviously your core races, such as the human, half-orc, half-elf, elf, dwarf, gnome, and halfling. Or you can look at expanded races of the more unusual and exotic variety, such as the catfolk, the suli, the nagaji, the tengu, a whole bunch of other ones. Um, they give you powers and abilities based on, obviously, what type of creature you are and, of course, where they genetically came from. For example, dwarves are very comfortable uh, in the ground, working with stone, and uh, obviously hate orcs because they've had a long-running history with them. You know, things like that are, uh, are very flavorful, so don't limit yourself by choosing a class and a race just because some stats match up. Play a dwarf wizard. Oh god, my kingdom for a dwarf wizard. Alright. Let's move on. So, oh, sorry. Uh, yep, size, uh, size, gender, age, height, weight, hair, and eyes. I'm gonna just zoom through all those. So, good luck, editor. Um, size is basically, you know, your, your, you know, how big you are, how small you are, ranging usually from small to medium, uh, with some very rare exceptions making you large. Uh, your gender, whatever the hell you want it to be. Your age, uh, obviously how old you are, your height, weight, and hair, like, you know, all this physical descriptions. It's always good because it helps you with your, um, you know, describing yourself to people when you enter a scene. You know, Willow jumps in, of the wind blowing through his hazelnut hair, a smoldering lips, you know, pursed, I don't know, something, something romantic that I can't actually think of right now. Okay. Moving on, uh, we then move down to our ability scores. So the ability scores are basically what we are and what our makeup is. We have three physical ability scores and three mental ability scores. Our physical scores are our strength, dexterity, and con, or constitution. And our, intel our mental ones are our intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Strength is your physical prowess. Lift, push, pull, chop, you know, melee attacks, that kind of thing. Dexterity is your accuracy, your aim, your nimbleness, your agility, your ability to get the hell out the way. Uh, your constitution is your health, your hardiness, and your endurance. These are your physical stats. Your in mental stats are your intelligence, which is your ability to understand and learn, uh, knowledges, and your ability to recall information. Wisdom is your ability to perceive and interpret, so your perception, your sense motive, your ability to kind of judge things. And your charisma is your ability to express yourself. So the ability for you to lie to someone or convince them your opinion's right, it is that form of expression. Now all the mental stats also double up in certain classes as spell casting, um, spell casting stats. Which means that the higher those stats are, the better at casting spells you are. So when you choose your class, always be aware you understand which um, of your you know, mental stats you really need to boost up. Okay, shifting to the right, we now see our hit points, which um, is basically our health. When our hit points hit zero, we are knocked unconscious. When we hit negative hit points equal to our constitution score, we are dead. Dead, deadly, dead, dead, dead. Dead, 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 dead. Dead. Uh, so yes, you want to make sure that you've got nice chunks of hit points to be able to uh, survive this game. Uh, next to that, you can kind of see there's a few other little boxes. There's uh, DR, which stands for Damage Reduction. This is a special ability that very few people actually get outside of magical items, but it reduces oncoming damage, um, usually with some kind of weakness. For example, it would be written for a werewolf, DR Silver 5, sorry, DR 5 slash Silver. Uh, what this basically means is that if you were to use anything but a silver weapon, you would have your damage reduced by five. Well, physical damage, that is. That's DR. Uh, below that, we have wounds and current hit points. That's pretty self-explanatory. How much damage have you taken? How many do you have left? Non-lethal damage. Uh, now, non-lethal damage is basically tracked separately to lethal damage because once you hit uh, effectively zero hit points with the um, you know total of your lethal and non-lethal hit points, you are rendered unconscious. However, more lethal damage needs to be done before you are <laughs> killed. Uh, this is really good for taking dudes alive, uh, but generally speaking, incurs a penalty on attack rolls w if you are to, uh, um, without some special help, try and knock someone out, you know. 
Okay, below that we go to initiative, which determines your turn order in combat. This is calculated by applying your dexterity modifier. Pretty simple, you roll your d20 dice, which we roll for pretty much everything. You add your initiative, and Bob's your uncle, you know what turn you go in. All right, uh, continuing downward, we go to AC or armor class. This is, of course, your ability to defend yourself. Now, a lot of people ask whenever I make an attack, hey, can I defend myself, or can I dodge out the way? Or, or can I, you know, pull up a shield all of a sudden? All of that is taken into account in the armor class. So starting from uh, left to right, you have your total armor, which is, of course, your base armor what, that adds all of your little factors. Uh, next is 10, which is our starting value. No one starts below 10. You just have 10. Armor bonus, which, of course, is the armor you are wearing, the physical suit of armor that you have. Uh, the shield bonus, which is granted by whatever shield you have. Your dexterity modifier. Now, uh, just to kind of clarify here, we will be doing a video on the ability scores and what modifiers are. Modifiers are basically what we take from the score to add bonuses to everything. And they're not one for one. So if you have 10 decks, you do not have 10 modifier. So let me just clarify that. Uh, so yes, your dexterity modifier goes here. Your size modifier. Now, size modifiers generally go in the flavor of medium creatures have zero to their modifier. Small creatures have plus one or minus one to something. Large creatures likewise have plus or minus to something as well. So if you have a size modifier, that is where it goes. Natural armor is kind of like scales and stuff like that. Uh, thickness of your skin. Uh, deflection modifier is things like, uh, usually from magic items, like a ring of protection, where you know blows sort of deflect and dodge off you, and whatever other miscellaneous bonuses you can apply to your AC. Now, touch armor class. Now, touch armor class involves your armor when all they need to do is lay a hand on you. So things like your shield, your natural armor, your actual armor, none of that matters. They just need to touch you in order to deal their effect or damage. Um, for that calculation, all you really need to do is remove any of the armor bonuses, uh, shield bonuses, natural armor bonuses that would be applied to your AC. Uh, you would still maintain things that would allow you to dodge or just completely avoid an attack, such as your dexterity, your size, and your deflection modifiers. Uh, as well as a few other extras like dodge and things like that, they would be applied to your touch AC. Flat-footed AC is literally the opposite, where you have only your armor to rely on because you, for some reason or another, cannot dodge or cannot move. Um, this will obviously remove your dexterity, your... Um, deflection bonus and of course oh sorry no not your deflection bonus just your dexterity and your dodge bonus so your ability to kind of get out of the way now size and deflection both you know apply to everything because your size doesn't really you know change whether or not you can move or not and your deflection is always just kind of passive so don't worry about them they always get applied okay oh and one more thing in the event that you are flat-footed and all they need to do is touch you then you are royally screwed because your base is 10 plus your uh, size modifier and any deflection modifiers you have. That is it. You are at their mercy at that point. Okay. Whew. Went through that one a bit. Moving down, we go to our fortitude, reflex, and will saves. Now, these saving throws are basically how we resist certain abilities, effects, and influences from our world. So, fortitude is your ability to resist poisons and uh, diseases and stuff like that. Um, reflex is your ability to dodge explosions and just jump out of the way. And will is your ability to kind of negate any kind of influence that seems to come from uh, exterior forces, someone like trying to control your mind. Going from left to right, we have our base save. Now this base save you can actually find in your cl character class, and there should be a big table. Uh, whatever your base save is at that level, that is what they are for each of them. You then have your ability modifiers. So Fortitude would use the modifier of the Constitution score. Reflex would use the uh, ability of the Dex modifier. And the uh, Will Save would be the Wisdom modifier. Uh, once those are applied, you then move on to Magic modifiers. Now these could be things like spells or abilities or items. Uh, throwing them in there, very important. Temporary modifiers, such as buffs and stuff like that, will go in there. And you would tally them all up for the total, which would uh, be what you would add to your d20 roll when making one of these checks. All right, let's move down. 
uh, basic, oh actually no, I'm gonna go with tips and tricks. So tips and tricks here. Whenever I add my race to my character sheet and I have something that gives me a boost to one of my saves, there's a little box here, you can probably see it. Um, that's where I always put it down, right? I mean, I could put it down where the race is, but that means I have to turn a page. Don't bother turning a page, just add in the modifier there, like, pl like elves, plus two versus enchantment, boom. Immune, sleep, magical, boom, you know. Just make sure that it's clear where your saves are, what save bonuses you get if, you know, certain circumstances happen. Uh, all right, next up is the base attack bonus. Now, base attack bonus is literally your calculation for any kind of aggressive action. This could be trying to trip someone, trying to hit someone with an axe, trying to shoot an arrow at someone. Your base attack bonus represents your training to be able to mess someone up. That is what it is. So obviously classes like the fighter are really good and have high base attack, whereas creature, whereas characters such as wizards and sorcerers, yeah, not so much. Um, so we'll come back to base attack bonuses because I've got a whole thing there. But just gliding over right slightly, you can see spell resistance. Now spell resistance is uh, very rare as well. And what it represents is a check that spellcasters need to make in order to try and affect you with spells. If they cast a spell at you and the spell requires a spell resistance check, they need to roll a d20 plus their caster level, uh, plus their stat, and they have to overcome your spell resistance. If they don't, the spell simply fizzles. Again, very hard to get, not an easy thing, but that's where it goes. All right, back to base attack bonuses. Now, some of the attacks that we are going to be looking at, your CMB and your CMD. Now, this represents your combat maneuver bonus, and your combat maneuver defense, which are basically anything that is an attack but not an attack. Confused? Excellent. Uh, okay, so what I mean by this is things like grappling someone, tripping someone, bull rushing someone, tackling someone, uh, throwing dirt in someone's eye, or uh, using the feign kind of maneuver to kind of duck and dodge to kind of get them offside. All of these are combat maneuvers, and uh, use this calculation in order to uh, both attack and defend with. So, your CMB, or your Combat Maneuver bonus, is what you would use to instigate a Combat Maneuver. It is your Base Attack bonus, plus your Strength modifier, plus a Size modifier, and any modifiers you would have from feats or abilities. You calculate that to total, you would roll a d20 against the CMD, which is calculated with a Base Attack bonus, plus the Strength modifier, plus the Dexterity modifier, plus your Size modifier, plus 10. So very similar to the way that AC and attacking works, this is how the combat maneuvers work. Generally speaking, if you beat the CM, if you roll a CMB and beat the CMD by five or more, you'll usually get another effect. For example, if you were to bull rush someone, that is to push them back five foot, and you beat the CMD by say ten, you may be able to push them an additional ten foot uh, on top of the initial five foot that you pushed them. So, you know, good to kind of have if you are that kind of uh, combat specialist. All right, now below we get to the tasty bits, the weapons. Yes, that's right. Oh, I love weapons. All right, so starting with, of course, what weapon you are wielding. Always best to also include any kind of enchantments or magical bonuses that your weapon has in this as well. So if you have a plus one flaming longsword, right, flaming longsword, plus one, you know, etc., etc. Next up is your base, uh, sorry, is your attack bonus, which is calculated by your base attack plus either your strength or dex, depending on if melee, then you would use strength, or uh, range, in which you would use ac uh, dexterity. Uh, you would then add any kind of weapon enchantment bonuses or enhancement bonuses, and that would be your base attack, uh, your attack bonus. God damn it, I gotta get it right. All right, so your, an example of this would be, say, an axe. So let's say I have a strength score of 14, which is a modifier of plus 2. I would have a base attack bonus of, say, 3, plus 2 from my um, strength modifier, plus my weapon, which is, let's say, a plus 1 axe, would then leave me with 5, and that is what my uh, attack bonus would be. All right, moving next to that, you have your critical hit range. So your critical hit range is uh, basically if you roll a natural 20, how much extra damage do you do? Do you multiply your, da your damage by 3 or by 2? What happens here? So that's what your critical hit is. Type refers to the type of weapon you're using. Uh, in the event of most weapons, you are looking at bludgeoning, 
piercing and slashing b p and s uh your range is obviously how uh, what the range increment is for your weapon most melee weapons do not have a range increment some such as the dagger have a 10 foot range whereas full-on ranged weapons have a usually about 100 plus feet worth of range bearing in mind that this is not the maximum range but simply a range increment the maximum range increment is usually five multiplied by that range but every range increment above the first receives a negative two penalty to the attack roll made when it is shot. Ammunition. What kind of ammunition does your weapon use? If arrows, uh, bombs, uh, crossbow bolts, whatever the case may be, uh, that is where it goes. Lastly, your damage. What type of damage do you do and how much of it uh, gets done? Uh, all of that tends to go in that area there and is rolled once you have successfully made an attack roll against the AC of a creature if you have equaled or or exceeded it, that is when you deal your damage and uh, remove the amount of damage you've dealt from their hit points. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go on the right side of the screen now and right up the top. And uh, we're going to look at speed. I hope the editor, you know, sort of did this cool zoom thing. I mean, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Um, all right, so speed. Your land speed refers to how fast your character can move. You can find this... On your race uh, race guide and what racial abilities you have dwarves for example have tiny legs and thus can only move 20 foot whereas most other races move the full 30 foot uh, you can also see there next to it is with armor so when you are wearing armor certain heavier armors will slow you down it will be listed on the armor entry be sure that you are traveling at the correct speed uh, dwarves do not need to worry because dwarves have no modified speed when they are wearing or carrying heavy things uh, next up, underneath that, you can see there's fly, swim, climb, burrow. These are very common methods that can be attained uh, by, by different races, by spells, by abilities, um, and they function fundamentally the same. Uh, okay. This stuff that we've just covered now is what I like to call the combat side of RPGs. So all of this stuff that I've just gone over is, well, quite frankly, just the stuff that you need to know in order to... Um, you know, get into a fight really rough, really quick, and just get it done. Uh, we're going to break this video up into two parts. So this part is now going to be concluded with our uh, combat stuff. Next, we're going to be looking at interactions and, of course, uh, skills, as well as the second page where we talk about abilities. So till then, we'll uh, hopefully see you soon.